Hi everyone and welcome to a special episode of Classic Gamer 74. I'm your host Anthony Ventrillo and in this episode we're going to discuss Bible games part 2 with King of Kings and Bible Adventures for the NES. In a previous episode I discussed the newfound prototype archaeology which has been missing for 30 years and how it is now available for download in ROM format all over the internet and soon will be available on AtariAge.com in cartridge form. And I discussed the hack, The Passion of Jesus. Either one of these games would be great for children or adults of all ages to play and have hours of fun doing. However, you cannot mention Christian Atari games without mentioning The Music Machine and or Red Sea Crossing. Both of these games are nonviolent, and especially Music Machine promotes good Christian values. However, both of these games are extremely rare, and getting them on cartridge format will cost you thousands of dollars. Also, Eli's Ladder, which is geared towards the younger Christian children to help them learn math skills. Also, like the other two, it's also extremely rare and valuable. All right, let's say you are a Christian parent or a perhaps a youth pastor and you'd like to let some of the children in your life play a Christian based video game however you don't have the thousands of dollars to spend on any of the three games I just mentioned well I have a solution for you if you happen to have an NES or a Famicom there's a perfect game for this situation it's called Bible Adventures the game was created by a Christian game company called Wisdom Tree and was first released in 1991 and then later was re-released in 1995 for the Sega Genesis. The game was unusual that it was never sold in video game outlets. Like some of the previous games that I mentioned, this game was only available by mail order. You can see here's a look at the commercial that was shown on television for the game. However, unlike the uh, previous Atari 2600 games, this game is still relatively inexpensive and can be purchased for actually less than its original price. Two variations of the cartridge exist. This is the black variation that is the most readily available version. And this is the light blue variation. One thing to keep in mind was this game was not an official Nintendo release. Uh, games that were not officially licensed by Nintendo usually were not able to be played on the NES because of a lockout chip. However, this one was able to get around the uh, chip because of a voltage spike that was in the cartridge and would activate as soon as the game was put in the machine. Although not a major hit upon its initial release, it did kind of develop, I don't really want to say a cult following, however, it, like the other uh, Atari games, there is a small niche market for Christian-based games. So let's check the game out and see what you think. In the Noah's Ark game, you take on the role of Noah, and you're trying to collect animals for the Ark and food for them as well. It's a fast-paced, challenging game that has four separate levels, and the Word of God is actually your life force. So if you run low on life, you can actually uh, pick up Bible verses, and that gives you uh, more energy. And yes, you are seeing this correctly. Noah can actually pick up a lot of very big things. I don't know how he does that. I thought he was a couple hundred years old, but that's what it said in the Bible. But anyway, uh, very fun. If you'd like to see the whole game played all the way through, head over to my Facebook page and you'll get to see it from start to finish. In the second game, Baby Moses, you play the role of Miriam and you're trying to rescue Baby Moses <clears throat> from Pharaoh. Now, you'll see that there are evil spiders coming after you. Also, there are the temple guards. And uh, it's just, it's a lot of fun. It's very similar in a lot of ways to Super Mario Bros. 2. Um, you can also pick up those uh, Bible scrolls on the way. They have helpful hints. And they also contain Bible verses. Again, another something that you can, uh, as parents and as uh, youth ministers, uh, this could easily be used in some sort of uh, lesson for uh, courses or for family Bible study.
In the third game, David and Goliath, you take on the role of David. Now, this takes place before David becomes king or before he even takes on Goliath. In this game, you are trying to save your sheep. Um, and, of course, it wouldn't be a game if there was nothing to stop you. You have rams that, for some reason, don't realize you're trying to save the sheep. Those mean-looking critters, I believe those are... Uh, badgers and of course you have lions also trying to stop you uh, you have to usually take the sheep and put them in a in a special pen that's on the end of the level and also you can pick up Bible verses on the way and sometimes the squirrels will throw uh, acorns that you can use to knock out the lions so that you can safely transport the sheep to the other end of the level definitely this has to be probably the most challenging of all three of the games, but yet I find it the most enjoyable. And of course, when you pick up the Bible verses, usually uh, a lot of them in this particular game come from the Psalms, many of which were written by and composed by David. So definitely a really fun, but yet extremely challenging game. Wisdom Tree followed up in 1991 with King of Kings, which was very similar to Bible Adventures containing three Bible-based games. It's also been called the er King of Kings the Early Years because the games focus on the very early part of Jesus' life. Unlike the previous game in which you just simply pick up the Bible verse scrolls, this one you have to answer Bible trivia questions in order to get the scrolls, which also again function as your life points. So let's check it out. Alright, so in the first game, We Three Kings, you this is a side scroller in which you take on the role of the biblical magi who travel to see baby Jesus for the first Christmas. And on the way you collect gifts like frankincense, myrrh, and gold. And you pick up the scrolls, again, that initiate a Bible-related question. In order to get the uh, energy, you have to answer the question correctly. Now, the camel on this is pretty cool. I mean, he can really jump and go pretty fast. Also, if you have enemies that come after you, the camel actually spits on them. Yes, I am not making that up. Uh, this one is a lot of fun. Out of the three, I'd have to honestly say this is my favorite of the three games, but it can get pretty challenging at times. I mean, it, sometimes it, it just amazes me how this camel can jump. I kind of wonder if the three wise men really had to go through this much trouble in order to get to see the baby Jesus. The second game is called Flight to Egypt. Uh, you take the vantage point of Joseph, Mary, and baby Jesus traveling to Egypt for safety from King Herod. Uh, this one is really a lot of fun too. Uh, you're riding on the back of a donkey and you can kick some of the bad guys in your, on your way. And I'll tell you what, the thing about this one, the trip is all uphill. And it's also quite challenging and also a lot of fun. And don't forget to pick up those Bible verses and make sure you're up on your Bible, on your Bible trivia so that you can uh, gain as much power as possible. The third and final game is the most challenging of all. It's called Jesus in the Temple. The game alludes to the story which Jesus is left behind at the temple in Jerusalem at age of 12. The player takes on the vantage point of Joseph, who is traveling to Jerusalem to find Jesus. Uh, this is a side-scrolling game, and boy, this one is really difficult. Uh, it kind of reminds me of, like, Super Mario Bros. 2, but boy, it's interesting because... Uh, you know, it takes a lot of practice because some of the, you think that there's a pattern to some of the logs and the different things you have to jump on, but you'd end up, be, you'll be surprised there is not a pattern. So if you're up for the challenge, give this one a try. Wisdom Tree would continue to release video games for years to come. Some of these other games are Exodus. Spiritual Warfare, Joshua and the Battle of Jericho, Bible Buffet, Sunday Fun Day, and probably their most well-known is Super 3D Noah's Ark, which was kind of based on the model of Wolfenstein 3D. 
Wisdom Tree Games is actually still in business. If you head over to their website, you can actually purchase several of these games uh, in their original format and special edition collections. And believe it or not, you can actually get some of those games to be played on Steam. So head over to their website, wisdomtreegames.com, and see what you can find. Well, that brings us to the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to click that little bell icon so that you'll be notified when we upload new videos, as we tend to upload new episodes every three to four days. If you have any suggestions for games you'd like to see reviewed on here, or a genre of games, let us know in the comment section below, and who knows, you may see it in a later episode. Do you think you have the highest score of all time for your favorite video game? Well, why don't you compete with other players and see if you really do. Head over to AtariAge.com and join up with this year's High Score Club. High score club. Uh, head over to the forum section and look it up. The first week we are playing Dragonfire. So head over to, again, AtariAge.com in the forums under 2600 High Score Club and participate. And who knows, maybe you have the highest score of all time for your favorite video game. Well, this has been Anthony Ventrol for Classic Gamer 74. Thanks for stopping by, and I hope to see each and every one of you in the next episode. Until then, have a great day. Goodbye.